Hello and welcome. And we're back to take a look at our Logic and Proofs courses, chapter two. So let me go ahead and share the screen there. All right, so uh, like the last time, we're going to take a look at the uh, practice and the uh, quiz parts so that we uh, have a sense of how to do these things, right? Uh, one of the bigger issues, generally speaking, for people is getting sort of comfortable with, uh, with the kinds of uh, interfaces that the uh, logic and proofs had. So let's go ahead and we'll take a look at uh, practice two here really quick. Let that load in. Okay, so in chapter two, we talked a lot about formulas and subformulas. And uh, we want to take a look here, uh, uh, a subformula here would be, uh, the, the, so a, a subformula is uh, any chunk of the original formula, including the entire thing, by the way. So uh, we take a look here. Uh, so the, the longest formula, that's more or less your whole formula, generally speaking, is this P or not Q then R. So we have the not Q then R, right? We can see that that's part of the original formula as well, right here. Uh, and then we have this not P then R. And uh, that's not the, uh, the thing itself. So not Q then R is a sub formula of the entire thing. Let's take a look if that is correct. That is correct, right? Uh, jump to, uh, to the next one. Uh, sub formula of what we have not P and S then Q or R. Uh, so I'm guessing that P and S might be a sub formula of the not, mm, I don't know that's going to be correct. Let's take a look here quick. That is correct, right? Because I think it, it's a, uh, yeah, you can break down the the not P and S into a not and then the P and S part. All right, so that's pretty straightforward, right? The, uh, the lab questions are the ones where things get a little bit more interesting. So let's go ahead and open up exercise one. load. In fact, while that's going on, okay, so that one is it's all the same. Uh, I guess we can do exercise three and maybe exercise five. Okay, so we'll launch one here right quick. We'll just break it down. Oh, reset it. Reset, sir. Okay. So what we're trying to do here, let's see if we can't get this to sit properly centered on the screen. Oh, close enough to it. Uh, what you're looking in a problem like this is you're looking to find a point where the entire formula sort of snaps in half, right? So imagine it like a loaf of bread. You're trying to find a point like where it to break it there, you're going to get like two chunks of a loaf of bread instead of like a bunch of crumbs and then some other stuff. So we're looking for the top level connected. Now I realize that here they put everything, like every formula goes in a giant set of parentheses, right? So you have this leftmost one and the rightmost one, and those are, uh, they're just sort of there. Then we have the antecedent here, which is J or K. Now this or can't be the top level connective because that J or K is like one little chunk off on its own side. How do you know? Well, it's inside of a second set of parentheses. And then you have the not J, not K or L uh, that's on the right-hand side and that's inside of its own set of parentheses. So now you have like one chunk on the left one chunk on the right and what's in the middle here, which is this uh, conditional statement, 
this is the uh, this is the that top level connective, right? So everything to the left of it is one part of the statement, and everything to the right of it is a different part of the statement. And that's how we're going to treat it. So with this setup, what you do is you click on the thing itself. In this case, it's the conditional symbol here. And so long as there are things that are there to be uh, broken down in a way that gives you two chunks of a formula, you are going to be creating uh, binary branches. It goes one way or another, right? So two options. So we click on that and see how it breaks it down. So we have J or K on the left and then not J, not K or L on the right. Now, uh, the disjunction will also give you binary branches, right? Because either J or K or possibly both are true. Great. You'll notice the same thing over here, right? That you're always looking for the next level highest uh, function. And that's this disjunction. So we're going to create a binary branch there. All right. Now, when you get down to these individual letters, these are atomic statements, right? So the J stands for like some particular statement and the K stands for a different particular statement. So that's an atomic statement. The K is an atomic statement. The L is an atomic statement. But here's the thing, you can't have multiple atomic statements next to each other unless you have some sort of a function between them, right? You need to have either a conjunction, a disjunction, or a conditional, right? So the ampersand, the B, or the arrow. So you can click anywhere on, a, on this thing, doesn't matter which it is, but this is just not well formed, right? So it's a badly constructed part of an argument. So we click that and uh, there we go. Now. That concludes the first part of what we're doing. The second part of what we're doing is they're asking us, well, is this well-formed or not? Well, if you have any part of this setup that is not well-formed, then the entire expression is unsurprisingly not well-formed. So we click on that. There we go, that's the entire problem. Now let's take a look at exercise three here. Again, we're trying to figure, so first we construct this parse tree that tells us what are all the parts. Uh, and then we determine whether or not it is well formed. Okay. So our top level, let's see here, so this is not, and then in parentheses, A and D E. Now, right here, you know, this isn't well formed. Why not? Well, because this D E doesn't quite work, right? You, you would need something in between that, either conjunction, disjunction, or conditional sign. And at that point, you'd actually need some more parentheses. I can click on this. I think I could just tell it. Oh, no, they want me to decompose it uh, first. I think that's going to require a unary branch. OK, yeah, so we're just going to take the negation out of the equation. And then what we have now, oh, come on. Uh, All right, fine, yeah, so now we have two parts, my bad. Uh, we have two parts, A on the left, and then we have a D, E on the right. Uh, and so even though we saw off the, uh, like right off the bat, this wasn't going to work, uh, you kind of got to track it all the way down. They want you, to be, want you to get used to the idea of breaking everything down first and then pointing out where things are badly formed. Not surprising there. Let's take a look at part five. Oh, these are getting a little bit more sort of nasty looking. All right. So what we just learned is that the first thing you want to do is uh, get rid of that thing. Now we don't want to make a binary branch, right? Because there isn't a there isn't a direction in which is, this is true or not. We want to make a unary branch, meaning only one sort of line down, uh, where we get rid of that negation. So there we go, that negation is gone. This is the innermost, the not P. Uh, oh 
should I can actually highlight if I can annotate. Yes, I can. Awesome. All right. So this here is the innermost set of brackets. So or parentheses. So that can't be where the top level uh, function occurs. And then here, this also has another set of parentheses. So that can't be where the top level function occurs. That means that this up here is our top level function. So we're going to click on that. And we're going to create a binary branch. So it's going to give us not P on one side and then everything else on the other. Exactly like that. All right, so this not P, we can make a unary branch out of that. So now we have an atomic statement. Over on the right, this uh, conjunction is our next top level function that's going to give us another binary branch, not N on the left, and then everything else on the right. All right, and then we have another conjunction here that's also going to give us a binary branch not P on one side and not O on the other. All right. So uh, we have three negations here. So we're going to need to get rid of those. Let's see if they want us to do this first. Yes, they do. Awesome. All right. So then here's the terms we have T and P O. So these are all atomic statements. All right. So now that we've done this, the, the question for us is, is this well formed? Well, do we have any part of this that is not well formed? The answer is no. We managed to break it all the way down to its atomic statements. So you tell it that it's well formed, and ta-da, now you're done. Uh, all right, that actually completes the, uh, the examples here for chapter two. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comments or feel free to email me. Uh, again, this is the uh, logic and proofs chapter two. And uh, yeah, that's it. Good luck with that. Take care.